2020 has been a pretty great year for PC gaming as I see it, and a lot of genres are getting some instant classics. We're also seeing some returns of some old school PC favorites. So in this video, I'll be going through my list of my favorite games that came out on PC in 2020 and describe what I exactly found so compelling about these games. Now this list is not in any particular order as I don't want to be ranking games here, but rather I just want to highlight a number of games that came out this year for their quality. So the first game on this list is one that may come as a slight surprise to those who follow Digital Foundry as I've really never talked about this game on social media or on the channel itself, and that is Iron Harvest by King Art Games. This game is essentially a company of heroes-like game or Dawn of War 2 style game in the real-time strategy genre, focusing on the core tactical combat. So base building is kept more or less to a minimum, and the important aspect is combat movement, cover, and taking over parts of the game map. The macro stuff going on in the background is less important. And this type of game, with its focus on more micro aspects of RTS, is not too common these days. But beyond that, the game also, by itself, has some rather unique things going for it. For one, it has this setting that is based on the 1920s alternate history from the board game Scythe, if you've ever heard of that. It pits the forces of Saxony, Polonia, and Rusviet against one another in the campaign or in skirmish multiplayer. And you have this diesel punk post-World War I aesthetic that plays rather well into the game design. So bulkier, tankier units are fantastical mechanized vehicles or augmented troopers, while the squishier rank and file fill out more traditional roles like heavy weapons, sappers, and scouts. It works rather well and is visually distinct. Another interesting thing about this game is how it uses the Unity engine. And honestly, usually when I hear a game is using Unity, I fear for my life a little bit as it means performance issues, poor user experiences, and not the greatest graphics. But in this case, I think the game runs really well for how it looks and offers up unique graphical features like the lit and shadowed particles that the game has, as well as its focus on destructible environments like you'd find in Company of Heroes. This is one of those rarer cases with Unity where I think a talented developer came in here and made Unity work for them without sacrificing too much stability and performance. They made it their own essentially. So King Art Games, you have my door. The next game on the list should not be a surprise at all after I made a video talking about just how much I love this game, and that would be Black Mesa from the Crowbar Collective. I really like Half-Life 1, and in the years since 2004, I actually find myself playing Half-Life 1 more often than I've played Half-Life 2 on average. So to see a team come in and remake that Half-Life 1 experience in a modified Source engine and somehow make it better and different in a number of aspects is nothing short of miraculous. Black Mesa is made with such rigorous attention to detail and love for the original game, and it transcends that original game to become a thing of its own. It also represents for me some of the best aspects of PC gaming, where a modding community and fans came together and turned a dream idea into a reality over many years of hard distributed work. So I salute the Crowbar Collective for giving so much of their time and effort into this wonderful remake. Also, I think this game has some better music than most Valve games, actually. I'm just throwing that out there. The next game that really impressed me this year is another Unity title, oddly enough, but a first-person shooter called Proteus. Proteus is a revival, retro FPS title with a lot of great level, weapon, and encounter design, and all packaged into a very unique visual presentation. The game's visuals are essentially a continuation of that workflow used in many games found in the middle to the late 90s, where high poly offline models were flattened out into sprites with animations for a variety of angles to make them look 3D. You know, like you saw in Donkey Kong Country, Doom 64, or Killer Instinct. But this game takes it one level further into the next generation of technology with normal maps and real-time lighting, with these sprites being placed into 3D levels. You get that look of a hyper-modern Doom-style rendering, essentially. I think it's very cleverly done, and it works quite well given the game's design goals. Proteus looks crunchy on purpose, 
but it also feels and sounds crunchy when you play it. Just have a listen. It just sounds great to me. Some people may be slightly tired of this wave of retro shooters we've been seeing the last couple of years, but I'm not at all tired of it. Bring it on, I say, as every retro shooter out there brings us slightly closer to the eventual remake or sequel of Turok. The next game on my favorite PC games list here is not actually a new game from 2020, but a re-release of an older game, and that is Command & Conquer and Red Alert in Command & Conquer Remastered by Petroglyph. This release is so well done that I just need to praise it again. I've played a lot of remastered games in my lifetime, and I'm always generally disappointed in some aspect of the remastering, where fans and developers do not exactly have the exact same idea of what is good. And here I think a lot of time was invested in making sure the community was getting a remastered effort that they would really like. They made sure that the original quirks to the first games were there, but that more of those awkward aspects of the presentation from the middle 90s were modernized. It's a remastering catered to the community where you also have the choice in the options menus to make the game really how you like. While some of the campaign missions of course have aged hilariously over time and they've kept some of that awkward balance from back then, playing it in 2020 I was reminded how much fun this game could actually be, even though it is a little silly. I think it generously helps too that the optional remade art for the units and the terrain really keep the spirit and the form of the original. As I see it, when I look at the new artwork in this remastered effort, it is the way my mind's eye saw this game when I was looking at it in the 90s when I first played it. And after this game's success, I'm really curious what Petroglyph and EA are going to be doing in the future, and I really hope more real-time strategy greatness and perhaps a new installment of Command & Conquer will come to be. Another RTS-like game that I was generally surprised in its quality this year was Gears Tactics on PC by Splash Damage and The Coalition. So the stop and pop cover mechanics of Gears of War and all those different locust enemy types actually are almost better as a tactics game than it is as a third person shooter. This is a tactics game that mixes melee combat and ranged combat and it works really well. It's not exactly groundbreaking as a tactics game as this genre already has a lot of really good games, but it's really polished and it has an emphasis on risk and reward aggression with the takedowns in gameplay and the executions you can do. So Gears Tactics happens to be a fun game, but it also has incredible presentation values and technology backed by that Gears 5 branch of Unreal Engine 4. And it even uses things above Gears 5, like Tier 1 support for variable rate shading, as well as all those other great things that Gears 5 had, like variable gloss reflections, dynamic resolutions, and an awesome PC settings menu. It had such graphical finesse and high-end features which are not exactly common in this genre of games, which really in the last decade, if not even longer, has been relegated to the indie and double A space. So I'm happy that Microsoft was willing to back this game project in the first place to allow it to achieve such heights. I'm not exactly sure how successful Gears Tactics has been, but hopefully it is successful and allows for more offbeat spin-offs coming out of Microsoft on PC in the future. You know, the Halo MMO actually never came out, but there are a lot of IPs Microsoft has access to that could find new life in an unexpected genre like Gears did here in Gears Tactics. Speaking of Microsoft bringing out some great quality games this year on PC, we of course have Microsoft Flight Simulator from Asobo Studio, or as I just call it, Flight Simulator 2020 or Flight Sim 2020. Simulators, of course, are not exactly games, as they don't have these clear ludic goals, but they do encourage role-playing, and the simulation aspect creates a playground, essentially, where anyone engaging with the simulator can make games out of the simulation for themselves. For me, Flight Simulator became a game of sightseeing and relaxing, coasting around places of the world where I have never been and I may not actually ever end up visiting. And I was doing this in a simulator with the lower difficulty settings set to on, so it was not overly complex or cumbersome like the simulator name makes you think it might be. That's not the only way to play the game, of course, but that relaxation, world exploration angle really appealed to me in this year 2020 when everything was just so bad. So I spent a lot of time in this game 
beyond my work, just relaxing. The Simulation 2 behind this simulator deserves a lot of praise, as Flight Simulator 2020 is a really good looking game. It's scarily real looking at times, and, and its unique simulation systems allow for incredible down-to-earth detail, and it also does not necessarily require a render farm to play. Yes, it's a high-end PC game, but it also scaled pretty well, at least on the GPU. Asobo Studio has mentioned that Flight Sim 2020 has a lot of long-term development goals, as the game will add more detail, flight experiences, and graphical options over time, and I really can't actually wait, as the game, even in its initial outing, is really well done, and it's a PC game through and through, and deserves all the praise it has gotten. Now this last game on my list, unlike Flight Simulator, is not at all relaxing, and that is Doom Eternal on PC. I played through this game on the Nightmare difficulty, and unfortunately lost my save, but at three separate occasions, I cried out in a primal rage-like manner after defeating a combat scenario. This game is a challenging power fantasy, and I know there are a lot of conflicting opinions about this game after Doom 2016, but I enjoyed how Eternal's game design focused on you staying in combat in rhythm, but then also breaking up that rhythm with really challenging opponents and bestiary that you're not used to, like the Marauder. Yeah, I actually really like the Marauder. Change-ups like that from Doom 2016 make it appeal to me, where it did not play it safe necessarily as being more of the same as 2016, which Doom Eternal easily could have just been. It could have been a map pack to Doom 2016. But beyond the difficulty and the game design here, I'm also really happy with the PC version, where I was never ever fighting with the controls here. Doom Eternal felt like a PC game first, and then a multi-platform game second, as it runs amazingly on PC, and I played through it at 120 FPS at 1440p. It really feels completely different at ultra high frame rates. But now this is our second new Doom game, and I think Eternal has hit the highest heights that this series has seen in a long, long time. I would like to see id Software work on other games actually for a while, as I'm really happy where Doom Eternal ended up. So hopefully not another Doom, and I think I speak for nearly every shooter fan out there when I say the universe of that first Quake game deserves perhaps a new entry, and modern id Software has really shown with Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal that they get 3D level design and they get internal balance. So why not try that again with Quake? I sure know I would love to see Quake on id Tech 7 with ray tracing. So there you have it, here's my smaller collection of my favorite games that came out on PC in the year 2020. 2020 has been a genuinely terrible year, but some games like this and the great work from developers has helped kept us somewhat sane. And how about you? What were some of your favorite PC games keeping you sane in 2020? Write a comment below please and tell me about it, and if you can, also hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you wanted to see this video in the highest quality possible, support us on Patreon to get this video and years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me about PC gaming in 2020, please do write a comment below like I said or hit me up on Twitter. As always, this is Alex wishing you hopefully a better 2021 and auf Wiedersehen.